you're probably actually using your link cable wrong, if not worse than wrong. In today's video, I'm telling you why you really need to set up this link cable properly in order to get the most out of your cable and your headset while playing PC VR titles. So I briefly mentioned using a link cable with your Quest and or Quest 2, along with a few tips on how to utilize it properly in past videos. However, there are a few crucial tips that really need addressing as the majority of people using a Quest 2 with a link cable are using it wrong, or at least not using it to its full potential. It's strange to me that the default settings for this cable are just so bad and the information surrounding how to get the most out of your cable is down to YouTube channels like my own to provide users with the information they need rather than Oculus making these important settings clear from the get-go. So before we get started, if this video is helpful at all to you, please drop a like down below. It'd be much appreciated. Maybe a sub if you want more content like this in the future. I'll also be doing some future Quest 2 accessory giveaways like this head strap here. So if you want to win yourself a Quest 2 head strap link cable or other various accessories in the future hit that subscribe button okay so starting with the obvious invest in a good cable i know this seems obvious but this is actually much harder than you think and perhaps even the cable that you own right now is actually pretty trash most people know by now that oculus's own grossly overpriced 80 dollars cable is just not the way to go as it does have some blisteringly fast transfer speeds due to its fiber optic design it doesn't seem to make any real noticeable difference in games in comparison to the third party copper cables this price point still hasn't shifted since launch and it's still impossible to recommend due to this price so you are left with third party options of which there are a metric ton of what makes finding a good cable even harder with these third party cables is within this haystack of copycats that likely all come from the same chinese factories anyway is the insane amount of fake reviews and deceptive amazon choice logos using a site like amazon review checker it's quickly revealed that many of these third party cables reviews are just full of shit. the use of the amazon choice logo is usually fake marketing bullshit to trick you into trusting a product. Oculus's own overpriced link cable gets a actual rating of 2.7 compared to the Amazon listing of 4.2 once accounted for all the ratings compared to the actual reviews by real users. Unfortunately, this is something the average consumer, like probably many of you watching, are just completely unaware of and likely contributes to the array of bad experiences and strange problems that some users experience with different third-party link cables. So when it comes to choosing the right link cable, for you, use a review checker, do your research, and make a solid decision. One of these third party options that are seemingly very consistent is Kiwi. Let me make it clear, I'm in no way affiliated with Kiwi at all, but they have proven themselves to be pretty trusted within the VR and Oculus Quest space with their array of different accessories. They make a range of different length and color cables, all of which seem to be much more consistent with their performance in comparison to some of the other options out there. The Kiwi cable has also seemed to provide, if not the same performance as the official cable, but even sometimes better performance than Oculus's own cable. Oculus, what are you doing? Why is this cable still $80 and locked to USB-C? Uh, yeah, if you weren't already aware, Oculus's own cables use a USB-C connection on both ends. And seeing that we can get the exact same bandwidth and very comparable, if not identical video quality from both a third-party USB-C to USB cable, as with the Oculus's own link cable that is USB-C to USB-C, it makes little sense that Oculus's own link cable is USB-C only unless you use an adapter. Unfortunately, still on many PC cases, USB-C just doesn't really exist yet, and this seems to be slowly changing with some of the new cases providing a USB-C. But for now, it baffles me that Oculus are charging $80 for a cable with a much more uncommon connection type that for many users will require buying an adapter or an expansion PCIe card for the exact same speeds as a $20 to $30 cable off of Amazon. This isn't even an old case. Like, even this one doesn't have a USB-C. Where's the USB-C, bro? Oh wait, never mind. I I found it. It's right there. Okay. Well, maybe maybe my maybe my motherboard's not a good example, but you get my point. Basically, right now, third-party cables are the way to go, and make sure you do your research and use some of these review checker sites before making a decision. Kiwi, like I said, is a very reputable brand, seemingly from the products that they have listed. I'm using a Kiwi link cable right now, and I've had no problems, and I've had very solid speeds. Now, in order to actually utilize the speeds that these cables grant you is the next crucial tip. Before you even slightly start thinking about plugging in your beautiful Quest 2 and booting up some games and playing some games through Link, is to change your USB power management settings 
within Windows. Blows my mind how many people don't even consider doing this or have absolutely no idea that this is even something they should be doing. So to do this, first go to Device Manager, find your USB serial bus controllers and make sure your drivers are updated. This is a basic step that everyone should be doing on most of their hardware anyway. Updating drivers is pretty common by now and most people are accustomed to it. But once you have confirmed that your USB drivers are indeed up to date, we want to change some of the USB power settings so that the Quest and the Link cable is allowed the full power of the dark side. So to do this, go to your start menu, type in power, go to power and sleep settings, go to additional power settings, change power plan settings, then go to change advanced power settings, USB settings, and disable USB selective suspend setting. Do it. Now you have unleashed the full power of the dark side for your Oculus Quest to behold. Next tip is now that we have disabled any USB power management settings that may be in our way is to change the resolution, refresh rate, and bitrate settings. It hurts me how many Oculus Link cable owners just don't even look at any of these settings, just like the USB power management settings. Even if you don't disable all of these power management settings, this is something that can be game changing to your visual fidelity within the headset and get the link cable comparable to games that are running directly off of the headset wirelessly. Adjusting these settings makes a huge difference to visual quality. So starting with the inbuilt options in the Oculus app, I would suggest setting the headset to 90 hertz or if by the time you see this video of the 120 hertz update is out, then select the 120 hertz option. But I'd say for most people, 90 hertz should be the baseline that you should be aiming for. But dependent on what games you're playing, if you can bump it up to 120 hertz or have to even drop it below 90, that's going to be up to you based on your hardware and also what games you're playing. Next, I suggest bumping up the render resolution slider a little. Granted, with my settings, I am using a 3090, so this is something you'll want to play around with on your own to fine tune to your own PC build. Now, let's get into something I briefly mentioned in previous videos, and that's the Oculus debug tool. This is a hidden gem that for some reason, Oculus just doesn't mention at all, and you literally have to go digging through your program files to find. This can make a big difference to your visual quality, like many of these settings. To navigate to the Oculus debug tool, go to your program files, go to Oculus, go to support, go to Oculus diagnostics, and bam, should be right there. Now go ahead and open that up. There are four key settings that you want to pay attention to. Pixel per display override, distortion curvature, encode resolution width, and encode bitrate. Pixel per display at the top is basically what sets the render resolution of the VR application, but since I've already set my own render resolution in the Oculus app, I'm not going to touch the setting. Next up is distortion curvature. This likely sets the curve at which the resolution is decreased based on your peripheral vision, sort of like a FOV8 rendering. So in this case, the low setting will give you less of this. So the low setting is preferable to the high setting. The lower this setting, or if you can disable it, the better in terms of visual fidelity. Encode resolution width. This setting basically just decides the resolution of the video stream that is heading towards the headset via the link cable. I personally have this set to 3.5K, but again, this is one that will depend on your PC. So play around with this setting until you get a good mix of performance and quality. Finally is encode bitrate. This controls the amount of visual information sent to the headset per second. I personally have this one set to 400 as any horror and I start running into some performance issues though if you can reach 500 that is great and seems to be as good as it gets though like many of these settings you're going to want to trial and error until you can get your visual quality and performance suited to your PC. Upload VR have a great article with baseline recommended settings for certain GPUs which should help a lot of you out. My final tip for using a link cable and something that I've mentioned in like my past five videos in a row is to pick up a head strap compatible with your link cable like my own. I've already ranted about the Quest 2's default head strap like a million times, but the issues felt by this crappy design become even worse with a link cable. Due to the fabric material that the default strap uses, if you secure the link cable to the head strap like regular PC VR headsets, the link cable can put a pretty uncomfortable amount of strain and pressure against your head after just 30 minute play sessions. Getting a padded head strap like my own or a complete replacement similar to Oculus's own Elite strap, though I wouldn't recommend the Elite strap right now as they're still having some breakage issues and it's a little more expensive than some of the third party options out there. I would suggest looking at Amazon using a review checker and picking up one of the replacement straps there if you're going to do a complete replacement of the head strap. But getting a replacement head strap can solve this pressure problem and also make mounting the cable securely even better as a lot of the time the default strap will cripple under the weight of the link cable pulling on it, especially as some of these better quality third party cables can be pretty gosh darn thick. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you. A like would be much appreciated and maybe a sub. If you want more content like this, I have more VR content and Quest 2 content coming your way. Also, feel free to hop on over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash get hip. Feel free to talk to me live over at Twitch about all things VR. I'll be streaming much more regularly there in the future. So, thank you for getting to this point in the video. I really do appreciate it. Those of you that watch to this point, keeps the watch time nice and high and keeps these videos recommended. So, you are the true MVP. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, if you have any recommendations on what things you want me to cover in the future, any 
requests down below would be incredibly helpful to continue to produce these videos and have more and more creative ideas for these types of videos so I don't sound like I'm repeating myself all the time about head straps. Anyway, if you have any suggestions, drop them down in the comments. It'd be much appreciated. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye. It's the outro thing where I have to talk about something because I have to fill this little box on the outro as it shows my videos recommended here. Check them out if you haven't already um, and follow my Twitch maybe because no one watches my Twitch. So uh, follow me on Twitch. I, uh, I'm going to bounce. Bye bye. Peace. Bye bye. Probably going to go stream on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Peace.